So we're leaving the cat hoarder property. Uh, we were contacted initially by code enforcement uh, because it's extreme. Uh, so what happened was the lady is, uh, I think 74, 75 years old. And um, she was in her neighborhood and uh, she was the victim of a uh, strong arm robbery. And uh, they thought she had money and I, she must have resisted and they shot her. Uh, I think they shot her in the leg. So of course the police came and uh, when they came, they uh, went into her house and witnessed the horror that she's living in. Um, she had a cat rescue uh, is what she called it. Uh, what it really was is a severe case of animal hoarding. Uh, she said that she is, uh, she had 22 cats. Based on what it looked like in there, I would say uh, she probably had between 50 and 100 uh, cats. Uh, 22 were confiscated and then three were found dead uh, in, in, the, in the home. So when we got there and we started talking to her about what happened to her and she started describing the robbery, right when I got my respirator and I put on my booties and, and stuff to do the walkthrough, she vomited in the driveway, um, which I've only seen a couple of other times and it's typically due to embarrassment. Um, but when she was sitting in her truck, on the edge, not on the seat. I looked inside the truck and it was also extremely cluttered, but I noticed roaches crawling through her, her vehicle. Um, so, you know, there's no way that she was bathing because she had kennels and clothing and other contents in the bathtub. So we know that it wasn't being used. Um, I saw no food in the kitchen. So it was either eaten by the cats or rats or roaches or, or whatever, but there's not even any packaging. So that's kind of odd. So um, there was a good layer of feces. I would probably say two or three inches tall. Uh, all of the furniture was clawed and urinated on. Uh, I could smell the ammonia from the street. So, um, you know, I wear uh, respirators and, uh, you know, to walk through there. And I, I couldn't smell anything, so that's awesome. But, you know, when we're talking to the lady outside, uh, she is irrational. She's trying to justify uh, why, you know, that she had a legitimate animal rescue. Um, she is, uh, plays the victim pretty good. Uh, she wanted to point out multiple times that the house was not condemned, um, which is a surprise within itself, but it was stickered, which means that she has a certain period of time to get it cleaned up or the house will be condemned and the liens will be filed and uh, fines will be assessed. Um, she has no income other than social security. So no way to pay for us. Uh, she works for a big, big company and uh, one of her bosses has uh, agreed to help her out. And uh, they're trying to raise money through a GoFundMe for our services so we can, um, we can get this cleaned up. So a job like this is extremely difficult uh, because of the environment. But you really feel bad for the cats that were in there because it's almost like they were in jail and forced to live in their own excrement. So it's just, uh, it's horrifying. And the fact that she willingly slept in there, ate in there, lived in there. Um, she's beyond depressed uh, and she's uh, really detached from reality.
So it's it's a it's a very very sad case, in my opinion. Honestly, because of her age, if she had not been shot or a victim of a crime, she probably wouldn't have gotten caught.